Hopefully you came up with beta is omega square root of mu naught epsilon naught, which is 0.02 radians per meter. Plugging this into our equation for the incident electric field, we get E vector phasor for the incident field, the function of z, is x hat 1 e to the minus 0.02 z. Next, we can develop an expression for the incident magnetic field in terms of the incident electric field. So as you've seen before, we can get the incident magnetic field using this expression. I'm going to put a to 1 here because we're in material 1. Gamma, the incident gamma hat, crossed with the incident electric field. We know gamma hat and we know E, we just figured that out. So one thing we still have to calculate is uh, eta 1. We can use table 7-1 to calculate eta 1 for free space. Lost this medium, eta. So we're going to use square root of mu naught over epsilon naught, and we're going to get about 377 ohms for free space. So plugging in Plugging this in, we get this for the magnetic field, and here's our incident electric field for this problem. Now this plane wave for which we just developed these electric and magnetic field expressions is incident on this aluminum surface. In general, we might expect that the sudden change in the characteristic impedance, so here we're going to have eta 1, and here we're going to have eta 2, uh, can cause a reflection, and in general, part of the wave may be transmitted into the aluminum and some will be reflected. We saw this in the transmission lines section of this course. If the load impedance didn't match the transmission line characteristic impedance, we would see a reflection. We can obtain the reflected magnetic field from the reflected electric field in the same manner as we did for the incident wave. So I'm not going to go through that and the rest of the discussion will just focus on the electric fields. Now what about on the other side of the boundary between the air and the aluminum? Well, we can follow an analogous procedure for finding the transmitted wave from the incident wave, as we did when we found the reflected wave from the incident wave. In this case, to get the transmitted wave from the incident wave, first, we need to multiply the amplitude of the incident wave by a transmission coefficient, tau. So I have x hat, 1 e to the minus 0.02z so far, if we multiply by the transmission coefficient. The second thing we need to do is we need to change the propagation constant. So here we had beta 1 for material 1. So we need to change that to be for material 2. So after all of this, so change gamma 1 to gamma 2. So notice I'm not writing beta because we're going to have an alpha in material 2. So we need to change gamma. So after all this, we wind up with a transmitted electric field is x hat tau 1 e to the minus gamma 2 z. Now we need to evaluate gamma 2. To evaluate gamma 2, we can use table 7-1 again. We previously determined that aluminum at 1 megahertz is a good conductor, actually over the entire frequency range of the E1 component of the EMP. So here's our good conductor column. So we can calculate our alpha and our beta. In this case, it's 12,200 nippers per meter. That's at 1 megahertz. Putting in our value for gamma 2, we get the transmitted electric field phasor as a function of z is x hat tau times 1 times e to the minus 12,200z. And sorry, I'm running out of room here. e to the j 12,200z. This slide nicely summarizes all the electric and magnetic field expressions for the incident reflected and transmitted waves. But we're still missing the transmission coefficient and the reflection coefficient. 
To get the transmission and the reflection coefficients, we need to know how the electric and magnetic fields do or do not change across the material boundary. To understand this, we must turn to Maxwell's equations. That's right, Maxwell's equations correctly solve for electromagnetic fields both within materials and also at boundaries between materials. First, we can use Faraday's law, written here, to derive the boundary condition for the tangential magnetic field. What we can do is apply Faraday's law over a region of space that includes a boundary between two different materials, material one and material two. We can choose any surface S. For convenience, it is helpful to choose a very simple surface, like the area of a rectangle that goes across this material interface. So I'm going to call this S, and the edges of this rectangle, did I say triangle? I meant tri rectangle. <laughs> You'll, you can see it here. Uh, delta L along this edge, and we'll say this is delta N wide. And the perimeter of this surface we'll call is a contour line L. This is shown more clearly here. Looking at Faraday's law, on the left side of this equation, we can sum up the electric field along the contour line L. So that's along the outside of our rectangle, rectangular surface. To do this, we should pick a starting position. Let's say we start at the upper right corner. Then we need to choose a direction to sum along. Since the edges of the surface, let's say we're going to go in this direction. Since the edges of the surface are either completely parallel or completely perpendicular to the boundary between the two materials, we can call the electric field either normal or tangential. So for example, up here, we can say the first tangential electric field we sum up is E tan 1. On this side, we'll have E tan 2. And then we'll, on this side, we'll have E normal 1 and E normal 2. For the contour line integral, we're summing up the electric field in the counterclockwise direction. Here's our starting point. So we're going to start off by going this direction. So performing the line integral, on the top side, we're going in the opposite direction as the direction we've assumed for the E tangential 1. So we're going to get minus E tan 1, and the length is, is constant over the length, so constant over delta L. And we get then, uh, this is again, as we go around this corner, we come around this side, it's in the opposite direction of E norm 1. So we'll have minus E norm 1 times delta L. And the other two sides are in the same direction as our integration, as our sum summation. So we'll have plus E tan 2 times delta L plus E norm 2 times uh, oh, this one was supposed to be a delta n. This one will be delta n. But we're interested in solving for the tangential electric field components. What we really want is E tan 1 and E tan 2 and how they change across the boundary, the interface. So we don't really c care about the perpendicular components in our equation. Can you think of a way we can disregard or get rid of the perpendicular components so that we can solve for the tangential components. Uh, and I should say, we need to set this equal to something. This is equal to minus, we'd have to equal to the, the flux of dB dt through that surface. So we'll be looking at that.